This video will cover how to make objects transparent, including how to edit a material, go over settings, which include thick and thin glass, transparency, refraction, caustic, and intensity. And then we'll review the final results. Okay, so here's a simple scene I put together. Um, I have three different examples here, each to show you the differences in some of the features that we're going to cover today. All three of these objects have a default SketchUp material applied to them. Um, and I want to show you what they look like if I simply render them without changing any of the material settings. And to do that, I just come up here and click on the render button. It's pretty good for a quick rendering without changing any settings. I rendered new the transparency setting for the material applied to these objects and rendered it accordingly. But now I'm going to show you what to do if you want to spend a little bit more time playing with the transparency settings in iRender Next. So like I said, I have the same material applied to all three of these objects. So in order to edit these objects, I only need to edit the one material. This works perfect, say, um, if you have a large building with a lot of windows in it. Simply apply the same material to all the windows and then edit that one material to suit your needs. This is way better than having to go around to each window and change the settings individually. And one other nice thing I want to talk about real fast that uh, is unique to iRender is that you don't need to dive down through all these groups of these objects in order to select the material you want. Simply hover over the material you want to edit and right click. So now to do that, hover over the material you want to edit, right click, and go to Edit Material. Okay, and then here's the Material Editor box. Here you can do all kinds of things, but uh, first thing I want to do is go ahead and change the color so that's not so SketchUp-y and uh, cartoony look. So I can just do that by clicking there. But now I'm going to focus mostly on transparency today. So you can go up here and click on the transparency tab. The first thing I want to talk about are the default settings over here. You can choose from either thin or thick glass. So this setup here is a good explanation of when you want to use what setting. This first one here only has one face, which is the typical way things are made in SketchUp. And then this one here has two faces. So just like a real pane of glass would be, or you can think of it as a solid block of glass. And then lastly, this one has four faces, or two panes, or two blocks of glass. This is an example of the way uh, modern two-pane energy efficient uh, windows are made today. So the first one is when you would want to use the thin setting. And the last two, you would want to use the thick setting because of the way they're made in SketchUp. Okay, so here's what these objects look like when rendered using the thick and thin settings. You can see how pretty clear things are when rendered thin, but when you set it to thick, there's a bit more distortion that can be seen real well in the wine glass and in the prism here. You can see that the grout lines just don't line up quite as well here um, in the thick as they did in the thin. Also, there's a couple more highlights added here and in the wine glass. It's these little changes that help to add uh, realism to these objects. Now also remember that the only things that we have changed uh, in the settings so far um, are the color a little bit, and we turned on thick for this example here. Okay, so that's how you use the defaults. But now I want to show you how to customize your own transparency material. So instead of using the defaults over here, we will be editing the values over here. So first, let me tell you what a couple of these mean, and then the others will be gone over later. Transparency controls how well you can see through something. And it does this by controlling how much light is allowed through a face. So when it's set to zero, you can't see through it. But then when it's set to 1.0, it's very easy to see through. So all of these are set to the thick setting. And this one on top here is the same default thick example that I just showed you a minute ago. And then this one down here is set to a transparency of 0.0. .0 which means that most light is not allowed through, making it so you can't see through these objects. And then this one over here is set to a transparency of 1.0, which means a lot of light is allowed to pass through, making it very easy to see through these objects. So easy, in fact, that you can hardly see these objects anymore. All right, then the next thing I want to talk about is refraction. Refraction simply controls how distorted light gets as it passes through an object. At 1.0, there is no distortion. But then at 3.0, there's tons of distortion. So again, everything is set to thick, 
And then this one on top is the normal thick default setting with a refraction setting of 1.15. And then this one down here has a refraction setting of 1.0. And you can see how you can hardly see the objects anymore. But then this one over here that has a refraction of 3.0 has all kinds of distortion going on, but especially in the prism here. And that's because the shape of an object can have a lot to do with refraction, as well as many of the other settings that we've gone over today. Also, in reality, uh, a setting of 1.25 or so um, is more than enough to give you some distortion. So just don't get too carried away with it. And now also there is caustic. And what caustic does is take the light passing through a transparent object and focus that light into a highlight. And it's a little bit easier if I just show you what I'm trying to say. All right, so you see what I mean. Caustic takes the light and focuses it to create highlights. And you can see that here around the glass bowl and most notably in the prism here. So again, this is just another thing that you can add to your transparent objects to continue to add uh, levels of realism. And lastly, I wanna show you how to increase the intensity of the highlights. To do that, go ahead and click on the main tab. And then down here, you'll see intensity. You can slide this slider bar here from side to side to control the strength of the highlights. So this is just a nice little trick. Now let me show you what it looks like. So the one on top has no intensity. And then this one down here only has an intensity setting of 0 0.10, but it's still showing more highlights than it is compared to the one without intensity. And then this one over here with an intensity of 1.0 has many more highlights and much stronger and crisper ones too. Now one last thing I wanted to show you is this more button right here. When you click on it, four more options show up. Um, I won't go over them now, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that they're here. And I think what I'll do is I'll load some examples and explanations of what these do uh, up to our site. So if you want to learn more, check out renderplus.com. Okay, I think that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching.